Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,290. If you have everything under control, you're not moving fast enough. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest. Calling in from Brazelton, Georgia, Mike Dennison. Mike, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I was told to wear a helmet, so I have got my helmet on and I am ready to go. Uh, I think our <laughs> our buddy Jeff Brinkley, who connected, has probably told you that. I promise to keep the car on the track today, okay? Perfect. All Good, right. Yes. All right. Mike Dennison is the president of Powered Vehicles Group and CEO of Fox Factory. For more than 40 years, Fox Factory has been an industry leader in the design and development of high-performance shock absorbers and race suspension products for bicycles, on-road and off-road vehicles, trucks, side-by-side vehicles, all-terrain vehicles, snowmobiles, specialty vehicles, and applications and motorcycles. Prior to Fox, Mike was entrenched in Silicon Valley's high-tech industry, spending almost 20 years with Flex, a diversified technology manufacturer of products from printers, in smartphones to audio systems and wearables. As CEO, Mike oversees relationships with Ford Performance, Michelin Raceway, Road Atlantic, Carroll Shelby, International's Raptor Development Programs, and countless other projects that allow him to live his automotive dreams. So Mike, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a brief moment before I jump into the questions and share a little more about your career and a very obvious passion that you have for automobiles? Yeah, you bet, Mark. And and just to clarify, so I'm president and transitioning CEO. So I actually take over as official CEO at the end of the June. But uh, for all intents and purposes, you know, we're in that transition period right now. Awesome. And all the things you said are completely right. Congratulations. So, yeah, thank you. And it's, we're having a, we're just having a blast. You know, for me, it's, it's interesting. You know, they say the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. That's not me. Uh, you know, my life has been, I was a dreamer. I mean, I as a kid, I was that kid that sat in the back of the class and spent my entire time with my head in the clouds. I, I <laughs> Every day I was hatching a new plan to do something crazy and wild. And I think that really kind of created who I am as an adult. I did a lot of reading. I was a huge, voracious reader as a kid. And that helped me kind of dream about what I wanted to be and who I could be and all those things. And you mentioned Jeff in the intro. You know, Jeff's my best friend. And, and you know, back in the day, we were probably eight or nine. We used to ride our bikes around, you know, the neighborhood and yeah. and talk up all these great imaginative, you know, we're going to go rule the world and be millionaires and all these <laughs> cool things. And, and, you know, frankly, you know, for us, it was just about kind of living these outrageous lives. And, and we were probably like every other eight or nine-year-old kid, other than the fact that we actually tried most of them, you yeah. know. So we we actually – wanted to go do these things and tried to do most of them. And along the way, we got in a lot of trouble. I mean, I, 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 one of our early stories, his, his parents had a gas station. And so he and I both worked at the gas station. Yeah. And, you know, when we were 15 or 16, you didn't have much else to do on a Saturday night, but work at the gas station. And so we would. And, and I, had, I had this dream car. It was a 67 Mustang. I mean, this thing was, you know, uh, pretty well uh, restored. It looked, it was green. It looked, it, looked, it looked good. You know, the interior was great. And so it was like, as you would think, at 16, 67 Mustang, how good can your life be? Only a problem was this thing was a straight six. Oh, okay. An automatic straight six. You couldn't go fast if you were going down a hill. I yeah. mean, the thing, the thing was a dog. But nonetheless, we're at this gas station, and so we had these crazy ideas, and we're like, hey, you know what? If I had some gas on the concrete, and then I Uh-oh. stood on the car, oh, no. I, I could get a pretty good burnout. So, <laughs> oh, no. So in the middle of downtown, you know, we're, we're, we're doing these crazy things, and we're, you know, having a lot of fun. And, and like I said, we just... We were a couple of crazy kids. Didn't ruin the car. Didn't get didn't get killed. Probably lucky in both yeah, accounts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I know Jeff's a regular listener here at Cars. Yeah, I've known Jeff for a while. I was introduced to him by Diane Brandon, who was the first female guest here on Cars. Yeah, she's a oh, really? a very knowledgeable Bentley Rolls Royce expert who's been a judge at Pebble Beach for twenty plus years. Uh, really appreciate her. And Jeff, I uh, just he is the most delightful guy. Uh, he took some time to visit me at the Classic Auto Show in Costa Mesa, where I was emceeing the celebrity stage uh, a couple months ago, and I got to see him, but I follow him on Facebook. I lo- and the guy has a permanent smile on his face. So it makes sense that you two 
were good buddies, but now I have a little, oh, yeah. a little juice on him about a gasoline yeah. and a Mustang in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to have to have a little talk with that boy next time I, I, I see gonna him. Make, I was going to make sure his parents don't listen no, to the no, show. Well, well, it was all fake. We made it all up. It's just for celebrity yeah. you know, show, showmanship here. Don't listen, mom and dad. Well, as we continue on your journey, I always like to start with a success quote. This is some kind of saying that's been instrumental in forming your life and your success. It's a nice way to get those inspirational tires turning here on cars. Yeah, so Mike, take the wheel. My quote actually comes from an experience I had. So back in 2000, I think 2002 or 2003, I can't remember. I'm too old. Um, but I, but I, I got invited to the 24-hour Le Mans, Ooh. which was at that point in time, the highlight of my life. You know, I was so excited to go. I was actually living in Austria at the time. And so and I got invited by Audi Infineon, who was a huge sponsor of that race yeah. uh, um, and, you know, really put on a great show. So I show up and, you know, I'm in the chalet and we're doing the thing. We're meeting everybody and having a good time. And I sit down for dinner. And I'm just doing my thing. And the person that sits down next to me is Mario Andretti. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I'm you know, gobsmacked. I can't even you know create a sentence to yeah. ask him a question. Yeah. So we're just kind of talking and, and doing our thing. And he was such a nice guy. I mean, he was so just delightful to be around. And I don't, I don't know whether that was just because of that day and that experience. But, you know, he was just he was just a fantastic guy. Cool. So so he has this quote. And it, and it suits me perfectly, I think. And, it, and his quote is, if you have everything under control, you're not moving fast enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. That's probably a well-known quote. But I'll tell you, you know, if you ask my friends and family, they'd be like, okay, you know, get your foot off the gas pedal. I mean, you, geez, you stop going so dang fast on everything. And I, and I, and I just love the way he thinks about it. Because to me, if you play it too safe, you're just not going to get anywhere. Yeah. So I, I love that quote. You know, what a wonderful experience. I, I have a place on my website where I, I – Try to get people to subscribe, and I I offer a free book, and it's an ebook I created called Filler Up, and the whole idea behind it is it's photos I've taken over the years of very cool gas filler caps on some very old, beautiful, classic cars. But I've interlaced quotes, many from guests I've had on the show, but that quote by Mario is in that book uh, because I love that book because it talks about you know we're on this planet for a very short time. You better you better keep up. And it's best if you're going fast, you're having fun, and you're doing everything you can do just like you do. So I'll remind our listeners, go to the Cars Yeah website, click on the free book button, and you get a copy of that book. It's really fun. Well, let's go back in time here. You touched on some of this. I'd love for you to share a story that instigated that personal passion you have for cars. Is there a pivotal moment in your life when you knew you were indeed going to be a lifelong car guy? You know, I Early on, cars for me were kind of a source of freedom. You know, I lived in the country, um, and so, you know, a car got me down the road. It, it allowed me to go see my friends, go into town, do things that, you know, that I thought were fun. So it, it didn't start as, it didn't start as a notion that, okay, I've got to, you know, I just love this car, or that car, but it was really about, it allowed me to get where I wanted to go. And then, you know, over time it just developed and kind of became more than that, but through, you know, experiencing racing and, and doing lots of fun things with some really great cars along the way. But, you know, I'll tell you, I, I think, I think I'm still developing as a car guy. I think, <laughs> nice. I think every, you know, I'm, I'm in my mid fifties now, but I, I actually look forward and I think about the next 20 years of my car life. Yeah. And I, and I think it's going to be so much better than the last 20 years. And I've had a great 30 or 40 years with cars, but I, I think of guys like myself and I don't want to put myself in the same category, but a guy like Jay Leno, yeah. These are guys that every day he wakes up and learns something new about a car. And and he's not Here's the thing. I think, you know, some people in cars are super passionate and they have this one car like a 67 Mustang. And that that's a car that they think about every day of their entire lives and and they're they're just fixated on that era or that, you know, brand or that model or whatever. I love the fact that every day I get up and it's a new, it's a different car. It's a new experience that you mentioned it. I'm a Porsche guy, you know, when we were talking before and I, I am a Porsche guy, but that doesn't mean I don't love McLarens and Lamborghinis. I've had them both. And frankly, today, as we sit here, my, I have a car that's in the back of a trailer headed to good guys. It's stuck in Truckee because there's too much snow, but it's a 51 Hudson Wasp. And Whoa. you got to see, the, you got to see this car. You know, the Hudson Wasp started with an inline four. That was the motor that, that car came with. Well, this one's been bumped up a little bit. It's got a V10 Viper motor in it. Oh, and, wait a and, minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, a yeah. V10 <laughs> Viper motor? Yeah. Oh, my this gosh. Thing, this thing is insane. And 
I can't wait to, of course, it's stuck in snow, but, you know, once it gets to good guys, I'll go see it tomorrow and we're going to have a great time. But, I, you know, like I said, I, I'm a developing car guy. So the obsession, you know, continues. And I, and I just think every day to have a different car in my garage or a new car in the garage is just so exciting. You know, I think this is a really important point. And I, I tell this to people like you. I love Porsches. That's been my mark of choice for a long time. BMW as well. But Porsche is really where my passion lay. But Get out there and go amongst other cars, talk to other owners, because you may know not know where your next love really lays. And you can learn so many cool things. And like you, I mean, you can get into hot rods, maybe you think you never liked them before. But the more I visit the past guests I've had here on Cars yeah, and with Cars yeah TV now, I get to go and be a part of. I just shot an episode at Edelbrock. And Edelbrock is an 80 year old country, but it's country. <laughs> it's a country. It is a country. It's, it's like a country. It's yeah. like a country, a company. Uh, but of course, you know, the Edelbrock family now is, is moved on because Vic Edelbrock, we lost him a couple of years ago and there's a, a new group now running it. And Don Barry, their new CEO president is just a car guy through and through. And I like hot rods, but they were never my car of choice. But after spending time with them and looking back at the history, I mean, I have this other love now that's dwelling up. And then I went to the classic auto show. I got to meet Andy Leach, Builder and uh, Dave Kindig and these guys building these hot rods. I'm like, you know what? These cars are so cool. I mean, I always knew they were, but uh, I'm glad you brought that point up. It's very, very important. Let's uh, talk about some of the roads you've driven down and talk about a big challenge or a big failure, because these are wonderful opportunities to learn. Like, don't put gas on a road and try to do burnouts. (laughs) There would be one, right? You might actually blow yourself up or something. Um, walk us through one of those, if you would, and tell us how that experience helped you gain even more momentum as your career and your business and your life move forward. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you, I, I, I'm a firm believer that success comes from failure. And, and I think the more successful you are in life probably means you've been willing and accepting of the failures that come along the way. And I've had plenty of them. You know, when I look back at my career, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to, to call out one failure or, you know, or another, um, because of, they just ended up being coming so good. And, and I, and I'm pretty happy with my career, but I, but I would say, you know, when I look back and I thought about this, cause you know, I, I knew you'd ask me the question to me, I sacrificed a lot and I sacrificed, you know, along the way to get to where I am, my work life balance was not much of a balance at all. I mean, I used to spend for the majority of my younger career, 45 to 50 weeks a year on the road. Mm. I was somewhere in the world. I feel, I feel, you know, you can extend your passports like five times. Yeah. I, I did that twice. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I literally would be in a different country almost, almost every month, if not every week. And, and, you know, while that was great because it helped my career and I climbed the ladder and do all those fun things, I, I didn't see a lot of my kids growing up. When I look back now, you know, you kind of look back and you go, what are the things you wish you would have done differently? It's hard to argue what you would really do differently because it's just part of the whole process. But I would say that I wish I would have been to more birthdays. You know, I wish I would have been things that were important that were not work related along the way. And and you know, it's a conscious decision you make. But along the way, you also realize how short life is at some point. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, this is a, a a tough topic I think for a lot of entrepreneurs and Type A really hard driven people that want to succeed. Is how do you balance that life? And, you know, I, I was somewhat the same way for a long time. I was at work a lot of hours. Thank goodness my wife sacrificed her career as an engineer when we had kids and decided to stay home and raise the kids. And I thank her every day for that because our kids grew up great. But yeah, I did miss track meets and ballet recitals. And uh, I miss some birthdays having to try. I traveled a lot abroad looking for products to buy and things. And if that's the one thing I could yank back because every night I walk down the hall and I see my empty kids bedrooms they've grown up now they're doing great and hopefully they don't uh think ill of me for not being there all the time but that's a tough thing to do i mean is there is there any piece of wisdom now that you've lived that and done that you might offer somebody who's younger that's hard driving and and may look back like you and I are now going man i wish i'd figured out a way to carve out some of that time yeah you know that's a great question and i and i think I think along the way, you have these moments where you could do the, the what might be thinking the easy thing, meaning I'm going to go to work at 6 a.m. I'm not going to take my son or daughter to school or I'm going to stay at work and I'm not going to go you know, have that date night with my girlfriend or fiance or whatever. When you have those moments of decision, don't always pick the work path. Don't always pick the work path because you know what? Work will still be there. And I, and I found there is more than enough time to get work done. 
again, your, your relationships and your family, you gotta, you gotta make them a priority. So when you have that, that decision point to make, don't always pick answer B. Sometimes, sometimes take, you know, take answer A. Absolutely. It's a, it's a great reminder. And for those uh, younger listeners out there, I know it's important. I know you're trying to build a career, but pick and choose those moments very carefully because you do not ever get them back, especially when it comes to children, because they grow up so fast. And before you know it, like uh, uh, no doubt Mike and I have done is you're driving your son or daughter off to college and going, that's it. It's over. I mean, from that part, that part of your relationship with them. So uh, yeah, pick your moments wisely. It's very, very important. Let's talk about your first special car that first special car and you've had some very cool cars in your life but let's talk about the one that was really special that you either saved up for or i don't know what it might be and and share a memory you have about that ride it won't even be close to what you think okay about a special car you know uh when i was in high school my dad traded a camper you know a camper that goes in the back of your truck for a new truck uh, and this was the vehicle, you know, at that point in time in my life, I was dreaming about Camaros and Novas and V8s yeah. and real loud. And, you know, because frankly, I wanted to get dates. I mean, I wanted these, I wanted a <laughs> car that I could roll up to high school with and the girls, Oh, you know, yeah, I want to look ride. at Mike. <laughs> yeah. Look at Mike. So, so what did he get for his camper? We got a, you're going to love this, a 1970 Dodge D100. Okay. Now, this thing, this was a retired Forest Service pickup. So it was like a faded green, but there was so much primer on it that you couldn't tell where the green ended and the ah. primer started. It was <laughs> it was pretty ugly. And and you know, the thing was is it wasn't even just the paint. This thing this thing had like the battering ram in the front with the spare tire. I mean, yeah. this big old gnarly spare tire in the front of it. And then on the back it had a wood rack because we go cut wood, you know, on the weekends and, yeah. and which is always an experience. So you go down the hill in this truck. You know, halfway down that hill, those brakes are shot. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, inside inside this thing, you've got the old Indian woven kind of seat cover, uh, you know, that uh, that you'd put on the top of the vinyl, you yeah, know, yeah. seats could be terrible. Uh, and I think even had a gun rack in the back window. I mean, this thing <laughs> well, they a, all had two back in 70, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it didn't do anything for my high school ego <laughs> at all. Probably not. I, I was embarrassed to roll up in this thing. But, you know, over time, it became kind of like this this badge of honor. I mean, yeah. people would be like, "Oh, we're taking the you know the big green truck today." And yeah. Ooh, you know, this is a this is exciting. And the funny thing about this truck was a manual. Uh, most of them were probably back in that day. But this thing's a manual, and the steering was so loose. I mean, it had like thirty degrees of sway, <laughs> you know, left and right of zero on the steering wheel. I mean, you had to like you're constantly turning it to stay to, to stay straight. Oh so, yeah, yeah. You know, it was it was it was just this this truck that you kind of go, wow, I cannot believe I drove that. And, and I don't know where the truck ever ended up. I sure as heck wouldn't want it in my garage today, but I, that is a truck I'll never forget. And an experience I'll never forget. And my friends won't forget it because it was just like, really, you, you're making me ride in this thing and we're going to go pick up a date. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if you want to ride, that's how you're going to have to go. It's uh, yeah. those old trucks. And that thing was just kind of a beast, but I remember a be- it has a beautiful ridge line that ran from the front light all the way to the back. And then the very end, if I remember right, it kind of swooped down a little bit, you know, which was cool. And d- nowadays, it'd be a cool kind of hot rod platform or something. Put a M- Art Morrison chassis into that thing and some cool motor and, oh, you yeah. know, it might be something kind of fun. How about seller's remorse? No doubt there's a seller's remorse story in your life, a car you wish you had not let go. Well, you know, I'll tell you, I bought a lot of cars and I sold a lot of cars. Uh, there's probably more cars I have remorse that I bought. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, you know, you're like, why did I buy that car? What, you know, what was the point of that? But not a lot of cars uh, that I have remorse over. There's a couple of cars, my McLaren, I, you know, it was a 12 C. It was a beautiful red car. The thing was so much fun. And, you know, it was a, the 12 C was a great car because it was one of those cars that it was really more of a race car than a, it didn't have a lot of great technology inside. You, you didn't have a lot of audio. You didn't have a lot, you know, it was really meant to go out there and go fast. And I, I just loved it. One, because when I, before I bought it, I didn't think I could ever own one. And then it just came, you know, came about that I could go buy it, and and so it was just kind of the, the first real supercar, if you will, that I that I could own, and so I owned it for a long time, sold it to a buddy of mine, he, you know, he loved it for a long time too, and it was just great. And then I had a Huracan, a Lamborghini Huracan. Oh um, yeah, yeah. They did it right with that car. That thing was just so drivable, so much fun. I'm a Porsche guy, but I but I think that car to me was one that was just so well done by Lamborghini. And, and I actually traded that car for the Aventador, oh. uh, which, which you would think, wow, okay, you stepped up to the Aventador. That's great. But 
to be honest with you, on the road, maybe not on a track, but on the road, the Huracan was a better car. Oh, more drivable, okay. yeah. more drivable, you know, a little bit more uh, comfortable, especially for my, my, my fiance uh, to ride in the passenger seat. Yeah. Uh, it was a little bit less of a, less of a beast. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know, sometimes these supercars, I kind of call them one hour cars because they're dream rides, but then you get in them and drive them around the street and they're just so much more than what the street can handle. That after about an hour, you're like, uh, what do I do with this thing? Now, I know there's some eyes rolling out there listening to this right now, but <laughs> but listen to Mike, what he just said. I mean, the car before the Huracan, the Huracan was just, it was more adaptable to the street. You could move around. Now, some may go, come on, that thing's like so far up compared to a Camry or something. But yeah, I, I hear what you say, but uh, all all spectacular cars, you've had the pleasure of enjoying well, let's talk about Fox Factory. I want you to explain more to my listeners about this company that you're you're going to be running here. You're in transition. I understand that. But it's an absolutely fascinating company to me and, and really cool website. You got to go check it out. It's uh, ridefox.com. Uh, I mean, when I go to this site, I want to go out and get dirty. So- Tell right. me, tell me about about this company here in charge of. Yeah, I mean, Fox is a fantastic company, and if you know the history of Fox, it starts with Bob Fox back in the '70s, and this guy, he's one of those iconic people early in racing, early in the sport. Now, his sport really started in motorcycles and off, you know, off road uh, dirt bike racing. But just one of those guys, and he, you know, Bob's still around. He just retired from the board. He and I see each other, you know, every once in a while. And just one of those guys is fantastic. I mean, the stories he can tell and, and the things he's done are, are magnificent. But, you know, Fox has evolved over 45 years. I mean, that's it's incredible how long, how long it's been around. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah. So, so over 45 years, we've... We've really gotten into the innovation and technology of shocks and how do you go how you go really fast over a rough country and and you know right now we're really big into racing uh, Fox Factory Motorsports and what we're doing in that area with you know the Baja 1000 and the Mint 400 I was just there uh, a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. you know and so we've just developed this really really fantastic race race solutions and and that's created this really passionate consumer brand I go to events now people are literally you see people you know, near our trucks and what we're doing and they're, and they got tattoos of Fox and our shocks oh my gosh. on their body. Wow. Yeah, it's like it's, they take it to the extreme, you know, and it's so much fun to be in a world where, where your customer is such a passionate enthusiast of the brand and what we're doing. And, and we've, and, you know, so we've, we've developed this, this great thing. And, and when I took over, as I'm taking over, I'm thinking about kind of where do we go from here? And I'll tell you, Mark, from my perspective, one of the things I've said publicly and one of the things that we're going to go do is we're going to go on road. We're going to get into, you know, Bob actually did uh, race shocks for the Indy 500 back in the early 80s. Wow. So we have been on road. And of course, now with the Ford Raptor, and you know, Chrysler products and and we're on all the TRD Pro vehicles for Toyota. You know those vehicles are more on road than off road, to be honest with you. But the shocks are very capable for off road. Well, now I want to go on road and actually create from racing into aftermarket and into the you know OEM applications, yeah. high performance shocks for for the road. And so we're we're working on it right now. We're developing some new solutions. You're going to see a lot of great things that we're going to do this year in that in that space. And and I'm so excited. Uh, you know, maybe someday you'll see a Lamborghini with Fox shocks. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But, I you but, know I have no doubt. I mean, it, it's it's really cool when you go to the the website. Bikes, motorcycles, off-road, snowmobiles, truck, UTV, ATV, and I've got a next-door neighbor i got to turn on to you because uh, he has a Ford Raptor he just bought. Incredible vehicle. He's already been playing. He's put some stuff on from Cobb. I've had a rep from their company on. Um, now your live valve for the Raptor. Yeah, you guys are just delving into all sorts of different things. So uh, no doubt you're going to have some fun uh, being a part of that team. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. And you mentioned mountain biking. Mountain biking for us is a big part of our business, and it's and it's one of those things where you know a lot of the guys that own a Ford Raptor or own a Jeep, you know, they may they may have a mountain bike in the back of that thing, mm-hmm. and, and it probably has Fox shocks on it. We win a lot of races in mountain biking. Wow. Um, you know, we've just had great success with with Fox and and the brands that we've bought like Race Face and Easton along the way are also great brands. And you know the other thing that we do is, is we build the the Shelby Ford Raptor out of uh, Elkhart, Indiana. You should see this truck. I mean this thing is a Raptor on steroids and it's 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 crazy fast. It has upgraded suspension. Um and these things these things are not cheap and and we can't build them fast enough. So 
you know, we're just doing some really cool things. Well, after this talk, I'm going to go walk my next door neighbor, Bill's dog, Warden. Warden and I have walks every day. <laughs> I call it Talks with Warden uh, because I walk him and I talk to him about stuff. He's my therapist. I'm sure he just looks at me like, what the hell are you talking about, Mark? But, uh, you yeah, know, we have a nice time. But, yeah, I'm going to have to turn Bill on to uh, this because he loves his new Ford Raptor and he takes it off road. He has a ranch out east of here. He goes hunting. And uh, he sent some videos of him out there just doing some crazy stuff. It's a He's let me drive it a few times. Insane truck. I mean, just wow. So uh, Fox Factory, check it out. You guys are going to love this. So Mike, up next is the last lap before we put the pedal to the metal. Let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors that make this all possible. Hey, fellow automotive enthusiasts. You know I'm a huge fan of Covercraft. I've protected my vehicles with their products since 1975. That's right, all the way back to my high school days. Want to keep your vehicle's exterior and interior looking new? It's easy with a Covercraft car cover. A car cover is the best way to keep your vehicle looking great for years to come. Car covers protect your paint from fallout, birds, dust, rain, insects, and pollen. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. I use my Covercraft car covers every single day. Right now, you can get 10% off all Covercraft custom car covers or their ready-fit car covers. Plus, they offer you over 15 quality fabrics to choose from. Their spring sale is from April 15th through June 16th, 2019. Order direct at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark at Cars Yeah sent you. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com. That's Covercraft.com. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at com or connect with me through the Cars yeah website at com. Hey, Mark Green here from the Cars yeah podcast. Did you know you can now see me on the Cars yeah TV show? That's right. Cars yeah is now on MAV TV. I visit some of the past Cars yeah guests and take you along for the ride. Go to MavTV.com to learn more where you can enjoy Cars yeah TV Mav TV is also available on Direct TV, Fubo TV, FiOS by Verizon, or you can stream it through MavTV.com online. And they said I only had a face for podcasting. All right, Mike, we are back, and I have a very introspective question for you today. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle parked in the garage, it's not what you want to be, it's how you perceive yourself manifested into a vehicle. What would Mike be and want? Uh, that's a good one. I, I actually um, thought a little bit about this because uh, you ask every every one of your guests this question, and I've listened to a lot of your podcasts. And I and I thought, well, what would I be? A Ferrari? You know, what would I? <laughs> really cool. And the fact is, is I'm I'm a Porsche guy, and I've got a, a 2019 GT3 RS, which I just ooh, love. Ooh. It's, it's a it's a fantastic car. Oh my gosh! Um, but that's not the car I'd be. I I've also got a 1963 Porsche 356B coupe. And I and it's a cool car. Yeah. It you know the paint's not quite perfect. It's got a few issues here and there, and the oil leaks uh, you know in the garage a little bit here and yeah. there. And yeah. you know, but every time you start it up, that thing runs, and it just it's just got a little bit of it's got a little bit of cool factor. Not exactly the fastest thing in the garage or on on any track, but it's it's so much fun. That'd be the car I I think I'd be. Yeah, yeah. you know they're so cool. I did a Cars Yeah TV show with John Wilhoyt in Long Beach, California. He restores some of the finest 356s in the country and I've always had a special place in my heart for those cars and he builds one with a very special motor that he puts in a 2.2 motor that he puts in which doubles the horsepower and while I was there he took me for a drive in a 59 coupe that had one of his engines in the back oh my gosh I gotta have one of those I mean it's just I need that engine yeah Yeah, well he can he can set you up I'll introduce you guys yeah (laughs) no problem he'd be happy to help you out well, Mike, we are up to the last lap, and this is where I fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of that Porsche throttle. Ooh, especially the GT3 RS. Oh, be still my heart. All right, here we go. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? Drive it like you stole it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I mean, not to cost you the keys to my Porsche. 
Uh, would you would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes? Be willing to take risks. You know, when you get the question, are you willing to do this? Are you willing to do that? You know, the, the, the people that say, yes, I'm willing to take that risk or take that challenge or go climb that hill are the guys that succeed, the people that succeed. The people that say, you know, I don't know, maybe this isn't the right time. It could be better or the money's not quite right or it feels like a step backwards. You don't get too far doing that. You don't. You know, I grew up a surfer down in Southern California, and I used to surf with this guy. And I remember one day we were out at a beach called Blacks, which on a big day can be a little bit of an intimidating wave. And I started to take off on a big set, and I backed off because I was like, whoa. And I'll never forget this. He's paddled by me, and he said, why did you take that? And I said, well, I guess I should have. And he said, shoulda, coulda, woulda, words of a loser. (laughs) And I've never forgotten that. Of course, I did take off on the next wave, got totally pummeled, Uh, thought I was going to drown. But, you know, I did it. I took a chance. And the next wave after that, I actually caught the wave and rode it. So, yeah, take a chance in life. You know what? Do stuff. Do whatever comes your way, because you never know that opportunity may never exist again. Well said, Mike. But you did drum up that thought in my mind. (laughs) At least I learned a lesson from it. Do you have a resource that you'd like to share with our listeners? I actually have a resource and a friend of mine that I actually have just found to be so insightful in life. And, and, and he's actually a best-selling author, too. He's real, well worth picking up the book and reading. The guy's name is Keith Ferrazzi, um, a good friend of mine. And the book is Never Eat Alone. And if you're a young person trying to build your career and understand how, how the world works and, and just how to think differently about relationships and business and everything else, you know, go pick up that book, Never Eat Alone. And, and you can go on Keith Ferrazzi's website. Uh, he, he is a consulting company called greenlight.com. But go check it out because I'll tell you, sometimes along the way, that kind of advice is, is sage advice and really helps uh, get down the path. Oh, very cool. Could you spell uh, Keith's last name for us? Yeah, Ferrazzi. It's F-E-R-R-A-Z-Z-I. Ferrazzi. Cool. Very nice. That's a cool last name too. Almost Ferrari. So I like it. Yeah. <laughs> if I could wave my magic wand and arrange for you to have a drink with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would that be? Carol Shelby. Yeah. So you know he had nine wives? I, I didn't know that. Uh, I knew he had a few. I didn't know it was nine, though. Nine, oh, my nine. gosh. And he survived I mean, as long guy. as he did. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Legendary guy. And just one of the originals, right? I mean, just one of those guys that really helped form, you know, motorsport. The fact that he took on Ferrari and Le Mans and, you know, with Ford, just a great guy. Iconic guy. You know, a, a friend of mine's Pete Brock, who worked with Carroll Shelby back in the day when, when Pete was young. Of course, Pete Brock, uh, famous for the Daytona, the Corvette that he designed, and also BRE Racing. and. Um, We were sitting on his uh, porch in beautiful Henderson, Nevada, overlooking the city lights one night. He invited my wife and I to spend the weekend with he and his wife, Gail, wonderful people, and of course, their cool dog. And uh, I said, tell me about Carol Shelby. And he goes, "Uh, that would take a lot of nights, Mark. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, he told me some really fascinating stories, uh, wonderful stories that he shared with him. He's the second most commented person on this show when I asked that question. Henry Ford's the first. Carol Shelby is the second. So yeah, I l- would love to. I met him a few times. Uh, I had a 66 Mustang GT350 that he signed, signed the glove box uh, for me. And uh, when I sold that car, I kept the glove box uh, just because that experience of meeting him and talking to him. But uh, what a character. Now, my next question is a book that you like. You mentioned uh, Keith Ferrazzi's book, Never Eat Alone. Is that the one you'd like to plug into this spot? Well, you know, I, there's a car book too. So, you okay. know, Keith Keith's book is a very beneficial book to helping you know, uh, helping you grow in life and those kinds of things. But the book that I think is just a blast to read. Don't know if you've ever read. It, it's called Full Throttle: The Life and Times of NASCAR Legend Curtis Turner. I haven't. No. You got to pick up that book. It is a hoot. I mean, from the way he was racing and and just the crazy life he lived and bootlegging. I mean, back <laughs> in the day, he was one of the original guys that did Charlotte Motor Speedway. Oh, okay. Yeah, so wow. he was one of the founders of that. He helped uh, put that together and build it with a partner of his. But but it, you, this is a book that people, a lot of people anymore probably don't even know who Curtis Turner is. But you don't put this book down because it's just so much fun to hear about him landing his, his plane in the middle of the town and, and you know, just, just some crazy antics. So it's a lot of fun to read. Yeah, a lot of those old guys were doing crazy antics. My goodness, you know, yeah. just a wild stuff. Well, I'll remind our listeners, you can find all these great resources Mike has shared. On his very own Cars Yeah show notes page, just go to CarsYeah.com, type in Mike Dennison. That page will pop up. There's also a great place called Guest Recommended Books. 
on the Cars yeah website where I've uh, placed all the books from my inspiring automotive enthusiasts there with quick, easy clicks to buy, including these two, Never Eat Alone and Full Throttle, Life and Times of Curtis Turner. All right, we're up to the checkered flag here, Mike. And this last question can be a bit of a doozy, especially for a guy who's owned a lot of cool cars like you. I'm going to buy you any cool collector car in the world today, but there's a couple rules to this game. It's the only one you can have. That makes it really tough. You have to drive it. No garage queens allowed. And you can't sell it to buy a bunch of other toys with. So that little financial trick's off the table. What can I buy you? (laughs) You're going to love this. The original Batmobile. Okay. Barris's car. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I'll tell you, when I was five, I was such a lover of that show and the Batmobile. At one time, I think I climbed up in a tree and put my black cape on, you know, and tried to fly. (laughs) Tried to fly. It didn't didn't go well. It hurt a lot. But but I'll tell you, that (laughs) Batmobile, that was cool when I was a kid. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you, I had a really wonderful couple days. Uh, I spent two days with the original classic Batman. Um, That guy was the coolest guy I've ever been with. And we got to shoot, do a photo shoot with him, Adam West, with Batmobile uh-huh. number three, one of the original Batmobiles. And he shared some fascinating stories about back when he was shooting that TV series about the car. And one of them was, did you ever notice how Robin and I always leapt into the car? We didn't open the doors. And I said, oh, well, yeah. I just thought that's the way Batman did it. And he said, well, that's the way only the Batman could do it because those doors were so poorly designed that they would only open and allow about four or five inches to squeeze through (laughs) because of that big fat trim line that ran down the the belt line of the car. So he said, when we first got the car, we went, well, how the hell are we supposed to get in this thing and look like we're cool? And the producer said, just jump in because it's open. So that's another little Batman secret. Uh, The other thing is he said, you notice how whenever they filmed us driving that car, they sped up the film so it looked like we're going really fast. He goes, that's because that (laughs) thing. I remember that. He said, that thing was so scary to drive. You did not want to go over 30 miles an hour. He said it was a frightening car. But the one that we shot him in that was a local car owned up here by the late Pat Hart, who was quite a collector and and a racer. uh, That car had been kind of fixed up so it could be driven and, you know, you could go out on the road and enjoy it. But wouldn't it be fun to drive around in the Batmobile? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That'd be cool. And, of course, we lost George Barris not too long ago. Incredible innovator and designer of cars. So the Batmobile it is, my friend Mike. I'll get to work. No, 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 no. Well, you've taken me on an awesome ride today. I've really enjoyed your stories. Thanks for sharing your journey with the Cars Yow listeners. Could you give us a little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off into the sunset in the Batmobile? Well, you know, I think the advice I'd give is spend more time giving than receiving. Because no matter what, you know, at the end of the day, when you go to bed at night, you'll feel better about yourself. Even if you don't get it returned, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Spend more time giving than receiving. You know, that's something I've learned after interviewing 1,290 people here. We are best at as human beings when we are giving to others. You really are, whether you know it or not. That's what I try to do here with Cars Yow, by having inspirational people like you on the show so that we can share uh, things and give back to others. So very wise words of advice. What's the best way for our listeners to learn more about you and Fox? You know, go on ridefox.com. I think you uh, mentioned that earlier. I think that's a great way to do it. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter and uh, Facebook and and uh, all those digital formats. Digital, yeah, that we talked about in our, our pre-show chat that us old guys are trying to figure out. Um, right. <laughs> we're doing better every day. Well, listeners, again, you can find all these links to locate Mike and Fox uh, on the Cars yeah website, just go to CarsYeah.com, type in Mike Dennison. And again, a shout out to our good buddy, Jeff Brinkley, who's somewhere right now in his Volkswagen pouring gas on the street, doing burnouts, <laughs> no doubt. Thank Absolutely. you. Thank you, Jeff. He introduced you and I at Laguna Seca during the historic races. So that was pretty darn fun. Mark, what's actually funny about what you just said, he's actually on his way to my house in Gilroy, California to drive my 1963 Volkswagen. And he better not be pouring gas in my driveway. That's all I got to say. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, don't be playing with gas. That's not a very fun thing to do. Not safe at all. Mike, thanks for being so generous today with your time and expertise. It was really, really fun. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thanks, Mark. This was fun. You take care of your cars. 
but who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimball.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.